to uh, share information about Google Docs, drawings, and um, copyright in this uh, new digital landscape that we are all plowing into um, with open arms. And we appreciate everybody being willing to come together in this way. Um, we have had a very uh, exciting response to the webinars we're presenting this week, and we're grateful. Hopefully, you're getting something out of it, and the videos that we'll have um, afterwards are um, certainly going to be useful for everybody. Um, hope you've checked out our county YouTube channel and that you've subscribed to it. Again, it's a work in progress. Um, we ask that you, you know, give us feedback on videos that we can provide for you for things that would be useful, and we really hope that this is going to become something uh, a, a great tool for um, all of us within Curry Tech County to support each other. Um, we do have some more people who are getting signed on. Um, we have 144 um, registered to attend. We're grateful for that. And, and uh, they're signing in as we speak, but we're going to go ahead and get started. Remember, please keep your mic off just because of the feedback that it provides uh, for everybody else. And we'll use the chat window. I'll come over here periodically and um, try to check for anybody's questions. And Kathy's going to uh, help me out and make sure that I don't miss anybody. So we appreciate your time today. So when you go to <coughs> your Google Drive, as we're a G Suite district, again, that means, um, I know this is a repeat for some of you from this morning, but we do have some new folks. We are a G Suite district, which means we have access to all of the uh, programs and functionality within the G Suite for Education um, free of charge. <coughs> and we're, we um, are very thankful for that. You notice over here on the side, we have a storage capability. Um, and it tells us how much we've used. We don't have any limits on our uh, storage, which is awesome. And it's all stored um, in the cloud, so we don't have to worry about maxing out our storage capabilities here um, in Curry Tech County with our own um, hardware. If you have another separate Gmail account, you will have limits to what you can store um, in there and in your Google Drive um, for your Gmail account. And that's just um, the way it is for you know every other um, citizen who has a part of that community. So we're going to focus today and <clears throat> during this hour, maybe hour and a half on Google Docs, which is the equivalent of um, Microsoft's Word program. It is not exactly the same, <clears throat> but they're constantly making improvements to it. Uh, and I will say, and Lizzie can speak to it more than I am because she does get a lot of the advanced notifications since she's a, a Google certified trainer, that they are very responsive to our suggestions and they do um, take what we um, share with them into consideration. So please let them know of things that you need, things that you like, things that you don't. Uh, you got to take the good with the bad. Sometimes they make changes and when it comes across on our end, we get you know frustrated because we're used to doing it one way and they've moved things around on us or taken something away or added something new. But um, like I said, you got to kind of take the good with the bad. So this is how you create a, a doc. It's always going to come up as um, untitled. And when you, well, I'm just going to leave it untitled for now so you can see what happens when, when I go to share it. So say I'm going to come in here and I wanted to make something for my students. Um, we're going to talk about the water cycle just because it's raining outside. And <clears throat> you're going to have them do an activity. And all of these across the top toolbar are pretty self-explanatory. When you go into file, you can share from here or you can share from here. Everything in Google, you can share, you can do the same thing in Google in multiple places. Uh, and you just have to get really comfortable in clicking around um, to find what you're looking for. So say I wanted to share this, it's going to ask me to name it, give your untitled document a name before it is shared. I think you can still force it to go through as untitled and just say skip it. But uh, it's good practice to go ahead and make sure um, that you name it. And with your naming conventions, you do want to be as specific as possible because it's very aggravating when you go back to your drive and try to find it if it's not um, named in a way that you can e easily recognize it. So we're going to say this is a um, uh, Google, uh, we're going to say this is a water cycle essay um, or a first bell or whatever. Then it's going to come up with your share. Now, we're just going to use Kathy as an example. She's not one of my students, um, but I'm going to add her in here like this. But if it was adding a student, and I'll use my sons just to show as an example. 
So you see when you start typing a kid's name, it's going to come up with their number and at Curry Tuck. So I know that this is a student Gmail account. Um, and it's just going to pull, it's just going to use their, you know, their um, tools to try and pull that information from data that's connected to the Curry Tuck domain. So say I'm going to add Joseph to this. And am I going to give them editing rights? Or am I just going to let them view? Or am I going to let them comment on it? So, so viewing. I just want them to see it. I don't want them to change anything about it. Now, is that going to keep them from making a copy of it and changing anything? No. So that's one of the things you have to consider. Uh, the great thing about um, G Suite tools is it's very much built on collaboration, but it also gives you a lot of functionality and some you don't always um, love with people being able to copy and modify things. Um, so be aware of that before you upload certain uh, documents and share them out. To comment on it means they can't edit it, but they can add comments, which is up in the top um, right corner is one of the places you can do it. And of course, when you give them full editing rights, that means that they can change anything they want on here. So I'm just going to say we're using this to collaborate on our group essay or whatever. When I, this automatically defaults to um, notifying people, and they're going to get this. You can go to advanced and you can you see how it's automatically highlighted. I can control C copy and I can go over here and I can share it in this way. Say I'm going to share it with Kathy. I'm going to share it with Joseph. And I could put water cycle essay. Again, the more specific you can be in the subject is going to help the people on the on the other end and I can include it in here. I can backspace up to this first, the last, whichever direction you're going in, forward slash, and I can say um, view, I can say edit, or I can say copy. Now, since I'm going to do this collaboratively, I'm going to leave it at view. If I wanted uh, the, the two of them to have their own, then I would do a forced copy and I would put copy. Um, and if I just wanted them to look at it and not make any changes on my original, then I would say um, view. So I'm going to do copy just so you can see what the forced copy looks like. And since I didn't put anything in this top, it just copies the same link twice. But I could change this text and say, water cycle essay for first though. You can also test the link in there, but what I like to do is once I have it in here, if you click on it, it's going to open it down here. I can test the link before I send it this way, and you can see that on the um, end user, it's going to come up this way, and it's going to say make a copy. When you're working in Google Classroom, like Mitch and Katie shared yesterday, um, you can set things up this way so that you share the one document within there and it force copies for each student. When it force copies for each student in Google Classroom, it adds their name to the file title, which makes it much easier for the teacher um, to be able to identify whose is whose. Uh, and I can also go back in here and change and say, you know what, I, I remember that we were supposed to be working uh, on this together, so I can change that end to edit. And then when I open it to check it, the end user is going to be able to open it and have access to all the editing rights. If I go back in here and change it to view, just so you'll see what it looks like. And I go in here and change it. Now, it might look a little different because I was the original owner, but it should say, there it is, it should say like view only. So it shows um, the other icons here, but if they have comments, if they are eligible to um, add comments on here that they can use, still use this and um, add comments to it. View, it'll say read only, but you can still make a copy of it. So that's that. <laughs> okay. So that's creating a file, sharing a file. One. It's working on it.
Okay, so we've created, we've accessed it, um, we've shared it, collaborating using Google Docs. Okay, so I have shared this with um, Kathy. So Kathy's going to open it. Um, she's in here with me. Kathy's going to open it, and I'm going to um, show you how, if I was doing this in a classroom, how I might say, you know, uh, Kathy's paragraph on whatever, on um, condensation. This is paragraph. Then when she enters the file type, hopefully you'll see her tile pop up if I can get her to open it. She's working on it. Get her to open it. You can see where um, she's going to add. That working inside a doc with students is a little bit trickier than working on a slide presentation with students because you can say this is your slide and this is your slide and this is your slide and everybody has their own space. Um, but you still have the capability to do some things collaboratively in here. Do freshmen coming into the high school have experience using Google Classroom and Docs? I think, um, Michael, that depends on the um, middle school um, teachers that they've had. Google Classroom is something we all have access to, but it's never been a mandate. So uh, some of the um, struggles we all have as teachers is when they come to us, they may have had access to or exposure to using Schoology, because that may have been something the teacher before them liked. Canvas, which we do have access to in the county, and that is a learning management system and pulls directly from or talks to PowerSchool back and forth. Um, Google Classroom isn't technically considered a learning management system because it doesn't link up with our student information system and it doesn't share grades between the two or auto load when we add students to classes. So Google Classroom is great in a lot of ways. Um, and it is a, a reliable platform that you can use, but it doesn't talk to those other systems. So it's technically not a learning management system. So not every teacher uses it. Uh, I think some still use um, even Edmodo. It's what, what they're comfortable with. And so it's never been a credit account mandate to say that everybody has to use this or that. Uh, but it does bring challenges when you have kids come into your classroom who have been comfortable using other um, formats or platforms. Um, from other teachers' classrooms. And sometimes it's difficult for them if they have four different teachers and they got two or three different uh, learning platforms going on in their blended uh, learning. And then the ones who are in COA are still using uh, Moodle because that's the platform that COA is, is still using and all of those function uh, slightly differently. And kids are pretty resilient when it comes to figuring out the technology uh, differences between, but they can't say that everybody coming to you is going to have had that experience. But Google Classroom is, is a fairly user-friendly um, program. And um, we do have the two sessions yesterday that we recorded. Uh, and we had a lot of participation yesterday. And we're sharing those videos and going to upload them on our YouTube channel, too. So hopefully some other people will see the value in, in trying it out. Oh, sorry, Wendy, about the, the internet. I understand. Like I said, when I was working in the first session, I was talking about a video, working on a video at home. Um, from one of our PD sessions at the beginning of the week on my CenturyLink connection at home, and it took forever um, to try and get anything done. But sometimes, depending on where we live in the county, that's that is um, what we deal with. This on my end. Um, hopefully, everybody's got their mics off, Chris, so that you're not getting that feedback. We should have a pretty good connection here because we are in the PLC. So, um, just keep your questions coming in the side um, bar, and we'll keep coming back to it. So, let's see if Kathy's. All right, so Kathy's joined. You can see when you have more students or whomever you've shared it with, their tile is going to come up here, and so you can also see her information. Um, I could email her directly from here. I could Google um, message her. Uh, it's the hangout chat, whatever you want to call it. Um, and I can even video call her from here. So she's working on her section. So this obviously when it comes time to turn it in, I wouldn't I wouldn't keep this part in here, but you might want to have some uh, kind of way to divide the piece of um, document up 
if you're working in a Google Doc and you want it to be collaborative or have everybody work on their own and then they come copy and paste and, and merge it into one at the end. It just depends on what works for you. So she's made some changes in here. Her icon is going to be a different color. And when I hover over it, it's going to show me who that person is. Because I'm looking at the shared link, even though I'm showing up here in the tile, it's also going to show um, mine as well. In Google Docs, everything change, saves automatically. Uh, that's kind of a double-edged sword. Those of us who are used to uh, Word and Microsoft documents, sometimes it was great to be able to pull up a document, make a change, save it under a different name, and keep on moving. When you're working in, uh, in uh, Docs, it automatically changes, it saves everything you do. So you don't have to worry about the, the power going out and you've lost your, your work. Um, but you also can't do things like, you know, pull up a previous document and make the change, save it under a new name and make go on. You have to actually come in here. I'd have to make a copy, change the name, and then make whatever changes I wanted. So you can see Kathy's working in here. I can go over here and I can click on all changes saved and I can see what's happened and by whom. See it's color coded here on the side. So say I um, didn't like what Kathy was working on and so I go back to this uh, version that I did at 1105 I can restore this version if I want I don't have anything here to show but or I could go back to the original to what we're working on currently it's always going to show you over here what kind of document you're in um, here's your title obviously you can star it starring it just means you're going to pop it to the top of your list like most important and I can also move it. Right now, I just have it in Drive. Let's say I want to put it in my fifth grade science folder. I can do it directly from here. So I can go into fifth grade science, and I can make another folder if I want in here. And I can say water cycle essays and check. And then I can move it in there. Now, if you're working in a Google Classroom, it's automatically, when they submit it, it's going to go into that Google Classroom folder that you have set up for that class. Um, and I can change my mind, and I can move it somewhere else. So you can undo it here, or you can dismiss the notification. So here under File, I can share from here. I can make a new one from here. I can open something from here. I can make a copy of this, and it's going to come up and say, <clears throat> what are you doing? I could say for my original, I say, well, I want to make a water cycle second bell, or whatever the case is. Here, I can share it with the same people if I want, but I don't want to in this situation. I can copy comments and suggestions from the original file, or I cannot. I can go in here and I can put it somewhere else if I choose to. So I could go in science. It's going to be a little tricky because of this box right here is on top of my menu. So I'm just making my screen so smaller so you can see it. So I still have the new folder here. So I could even make a new folder. If that's what I wanted to do. Just try and keep it organized. And I'll be the first to admit I have not been the best about trying to keep it organized to get so busy doing things that um, things pile up just like, you know, papers do on our desk. And uh, But if we can kind of ex establish some of these habits moving forward and get our things cleaned up and, and put them in files as we're creating them. I think it'll be a lot less frustrating when you have to go back and try to find what you're looking for. So that's make a copy. Um, I can download this. Notice I can download it as a Word document. We still have access to Word, Excel, PowerPoint, all of those things. Um, we, we made the switch to Microsoft um, Office 365 um, because they were no longer um, the licensing changed and so they're pushing everybody in that direction which is a web-based program and you can um, have access to it anywhere which is nice and we didn't have that originally um, and if you've been in there and looked at it it is I use the term googly I don't even think that's a real word but it looks very googly to me because it looks like they followed along the same lines of a lot of things that Google Drive did to begin with but they do have a lot more functionality within their word uh, their Word program than we currently have access um, accessibility to in, in um, Docs. But again, they're constantly making changes. So I could download it. Um, go back over here. I could download it as a Word document. 
open document format. Notice the end, this would be the end of the file name, a rich text format, a PDF, plain text, web page, or an e-publication format. Now, sometimes you will be specifically asked to turn in an item in a certain file type. We have to do that a lot with testing um, data. So you have that's what a lot of these endings are. Most of the time, you're just going to deal directly with uh, docs here, Word, or um, PDFs. But you do have that capability. You can email as an attachment directly from here. Um, make available offline. Some of our kids don't have internet access at home or they have the same kind of access that we're dealing with um, at our houses. So notice that it's now checked. What that means is, is that Kathy, when she goes home, since she's got this document, whatever changes were made, as of the time she disconnects from Curita County Wi-Fi and takes it home, she will, it will still look the same when she opens it up because she has offline access to it. She can continue to work on her paragraph. I will not see that until she connects to Wi-Fi again and those sync but she can work offline some on her Chromebook um, to work on things at home, and a lot of kids do this throughout the school year. But you will not see it until they reconnect and the accounts and the information um, syncs. And you can click this off if you don't want them working offline. You can also see the version history here as well as here, as well as over here. You can rename it from here, although you can just click in this box up here and rename it. Like I said, Google, you can do lots of things multiple different ways. You can move it from here, you can put it in the trash, publish to the web, email collaborators, um, look at the details, print it, change the page setup. Page setup, this is where you would go if you want to change it from portrait to landscape, you want to change the paper size um, that you're going to print it to, if you want to change the um, margins over here on the side, all you're doing is clicking in the box. And I'm going to change it to one inch all the way around. Um, you can also change the page color, which if you're dealing with uh, accessibility um, issues, you might want to do that to make it easier um, on the eyes for somebody who's uh, visually um, impaired and needs uh, a different contrast. So those are your options under file. Edit, undo, undo. Control Z is the best invention ever, I think. Um, and you can do it lots and lots and lots of times. So if you made lots of mistakes, you can um, control Z, control Z, control Z, and get back to what uh, you had. You can also copy and paste using control C, control X to cut it, control V. Kathy says V for victory. Can't be control P because that's print. I don't know where they got the V from. But, um, and sometimes if you're pasting it and you have issues with the format, you can do the, the paste without formatting. Sometimes when you're bringing something in, if it looks a bit off, you can get rid of that and bring it back in without the formatting. You can also do the find and replace. This is if, like, I'm trying to think of a situation. If, if there was a, a particular um, phrase or a word or something in there and you needed to change it and there were several occurrences of that, then you could use that find and replace. Um, we used it uh, recently when we were doing an E-rate um, an E-rate uh, request for uh, quotes about the way something was um, noted on the spreadsheet, and we were able to do the find and replace. And and instead of having to search through, we were able to replace you know ten or twelve different things um, in a very short amount of time. View. We're looking at the print um, layout. You can do editing, suggesting, or viewing. It's always going to come up to editing first. I leave these alone as far as showing the ruler and the document outline. That's up to you. You can change any of the, these settings that you want, but I, I'm used to using it this way, so I kind of leave those things alone. We can insert an image here, a table, or a drawing. So just to show you, see, when I do control V, I mean control Z, it's only going to um, take out what I have done recently. I can't overwrite anything that Kathy's done by using, I can't undo things that Kathy's done by doing control um, Z. But we're going to insert, say we're going to insert uh, an image. So when you're inserting an image, you can upload it from the computer if you already have it on here, um, search from the web, pull it up from your drive, or all of these other options. So say I'm going to search for the web. And I'm going to, I'm doing something on water cycle and we want to include an image in here. <clears throat> if I am looking in here, these are considered copyright safe to use. 
The only things that are going to come up over here in this window are things that uh, we have permission to use as far as copyright. I'm just going to click it and I'm going to pull it in. Again, you're working in a doc, you're not working in a drawing. So you do have some, um, it's always going to either try to left justify, center, or right justify because it is a document. So if you wanted it smaller and you wanted it center, you're not going to have the, you're not going to see the cross pairs with the um, arrows, the plus sign with the arrows on the end. It looks like a coordinate graph plane, you know, system in the middle. You're not going to be able to pull it around like that, but you can. Um, you can change it. Let's see if it'll come up. I don't want to replace the image. I wound up moving the text. So here I've got the image selected. You can see the squares around it. And I'm going to click center and it's going to put it in the middle. If I pull, notice if I get to the corner, it turns into the arrows align with the arrows on either end. I can pull it one way or another and resize it. The reason I would recommend that over using this one on the right or this one at the bottom is because it keeps the ratio consistent. If I do this, it's going to look squished. And if I do this, it's going to look drawn out weird. So usually when I resize images, I'll usually do it this way. And notice that when I'm down here, it's going to stay with the same um, it's going to stay with the same uh, arrangement of um, the alignment. So I want to go back over to the side. So say now I'm going to insert, let's say a table. So tables in drawing in uh, docs is different than an Excel spreadsheet. I like to use tables from time to time. It automatically uh, wraps the text. It expands the boxes. There's a lot of nice things you can do with tables. And we'll just put some in here just to show um, say, uh, we're going to say the steps. And we start with evaporation. And we're going to say examples, scene, nature, or something like that. Whatever you're going to have. When you're in here, you can tab across, and when you get to this box, if you continue to tab, it's just going to add another row. So all of these are rows, and these are columns. Notice there's a, a menu, a drop-down menu in the corner of each. I can change what the borders look like, but that's a personal, that's totally up to you. Say, I don't want this one to have, um, let's see, say I'm, I only, let me see how I can show you. Do this. Say I only want these to show in the middle. I don't know. Anyway, I I haven't done a lot with that in here because I just never really had the the need to. But you can go in here and you can color code. Um, you can change the editing, suggesting or viewing over here. You have additional icons. Always the three dots means more. So I can go in here and I can change the background color um, on this one and leave the rest alone however you want to do it. I can also say, oh, I didn't mean to add that, so I'm going to delete that row. Or I could be here and say, you know what, I need another row above it, or I need a row above this. So you're right-clicking, and it brings up all of these other options. You can also embed links in here. Uh, you can um, distribute the rows, and what that means is, say, I don't like this text to wrap like this, so I'm going to make this bigger. But I don't. I want these two rows to be the same width. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to right click, and I'm going to say I want to distribute my columns. So it's going to evenly space what's left. So there's quite a bit you can do on um, tables in here. I get a lot of use out of them. Drawings, uh, we're going to do in a little bit. And you can insert charts, and you can insert them from sheets. You can do a line, say I want to separate this out, so I can go in here and I can divide it out into sections. So you can just do insert a line. And if you want it gone, control Z, poof it's gone, or you can delete it out. Uh, footnote, so if you're going to take your Google Level 1 exam, you are going to be asked to do 
one of these unless they've changed the exam since um, we took it. So say we're doing water cycle and we send our kids out and we're always an advocate for NCYs out because that's what our state helps pay for. Some of our tax dollars goes to that. So we're always going to um, send kids there first and say, I want to find out something about water cycle. And Kathy wants me to make sure that you know that the password for this year is WiseOwl19. She can put it in the chat window, but you cannot post that on your school website or anywhere else because um, it is paid for by North Carolina tax dollars, and so it's only we're only able to use it for North Carolina students. So you can give that password to North Carolina students and put it in your classroom, and put it in your classroom but don't put it out on the open web page for um, people from whatever other state to um, come in and get access to the resources because that's a copyright violation. They do provide this for us and we're grateful for it. So I search for water cycle. I'm just going to pull up in this um, article and certainly we don't want kids doing this, but I'm going to show you. They copied and pasted this in. I'm going to put it in here. <clears throat> then I can go up here and say insert footnote. You're going to notice it puts the little one right there. It comes down here and automatically adds the footnote to the bottom. I'm going to come back over here. I'm going to highlight, copy and paste. I'm going to go back into my article and I'm going to put the, the article citation there on the bottom to show that we're giving credit where credit's due. But obviously I know that we do not want kids just copied and pasted from the, the encyclopedia. I just wanted to show you what it looked like if you did a footnote. All right, let's see if you have any questions. Uh, Nicole, for um, Greg's, you might be trying to use the old version of uh, Microsoft and uh, Office. And um, Andy's made a video and he's put it on our YouTube channel, but we can share the link too about how to log into Office 365. You're going to go to Office 365 online and you're going to use your username and password just like you sign in through Zscaler. It's your email address and then your network login password just like you get in through Zscaler and you'll have access to. Um, all of those, Word, Excel, PowerPoint. Um, my students are doing their review work from the district website on Google Docs and sharing with me so that I can help them. That's awesome. I usually saw that someone asked how, oh. Oh, I remember those times. And mine, are, mine are 21 and 18. I, I hope the nights get better. I remember the first uh, night I was able to sleep completely through the night. I felt great with that after the initial panic of waking up and realized I hadn't been up. <laughs> um, so I hope things are going well with the baby. Do students see items that need to be corrected? The items are underlined. Yes, they do. Uh, and they do, they do get frustrated having worked with gifted kids. They get really frustrated if it's a name and you tell them it's okay and it was spelled correctly, but it still shows that squiggle line underneath. And then you've got other kids who see lines underneath everything and could care less. So that's a constant battle. Um, Jennifer, that's good to know. My middle school students do know how to use Google Classroom and Google Docs. All students in visual arts used it at Career Tech Middle School. That's good. Sixth grade. That's great. So many kids are using it. Some, uh, Virginia said some of the, several of the Career Tech Middle School teachers are using it. Um, and I'm sorry, I'm going to apologize up front in case I miss anybody. Kathy's trying to help me keep, keep, um, up on the questions on the side. Kathy's getting ready to share something with you. With you. Oh, with me. Yeah. See if there's anything I missed. How or where do students find their offline docs copy? What happens is they sign in on their Chromebook just as they normally would, and it gives them access to their drive. They can't tell from looking at it that it, that it doesn't look any different, really. It just isn't updating. It isn't syncing. So if Kathy's and I are working on a document, and she's at her house and I'm at mine, and we're both working offline, we're not going to be able to see what the other person is doing until we connect to the Internet again, and that syncs those accounts. Um, I didn't see it. Oh, Melissa, yikes.
Yeah, scary times about the, the cases that are, are getting closer to us. Um, just to be clear, anything I can find by going to Google through the right of the document I want to use in terms of anything I can find by going to Google through the right. Uh, is my understanding, yes, Valerie, that if you go in and you're in Docs and you're searching in to import an image right there within, that Google has already done the copyright search part for you. Now, if you open another link and go out into Google, and that's what Kathy's going to talk about later, that's different and you need to check the rights. But yes, when a student is in the doc and they do insert from web and they go over to the right, those are copyright uh, approved. Any way to turn off the little notices at the bottom of my screen? Oh, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure about that. We'll have to check into that popping up on the bottom of your screen. Uh, Vir uh, Virginia, yeah, you're really going to love um, tables once you get used to use them. Like I said, I, I like Excel too, and we'll eventually do something with um, them. Although um, Mr. Andrew Kovacs is going to share some when he's talking about Google Forms and they attach to sheets, but I can also do another session on sheets. Um, but there's okay. there's definitely something to be said for tables and documents. NCYs out will let you upload books from um, EBSCO into your Google Classroom. That's good. Brenda Forehand is asking about the password. Thank you, Jennifer, for sharing that. So we are not allowed to post that resource on Class Dojo. Oh, um, you can post it on Class Dojo because that is within your teacher parent group but but please ask your parents not to put it on their Facebook page or I know I don't think they would I'm just saying we're obligated to say that um, we need to try to keep that secure which is why we don't have that password on our Curry Tech County um, website and yes this is part of the uh, Google level one exam Oh, uh, how to use a subscript. We'll try to get, I'll try to show you how to do that, that uh, for chemistry and math teachers. How do you turn off for my students that are using there? Yeah. How do I turn it off for my students who are using their school Google account to join my Google Meet? Yeah. Oh, Andy's included the um, link right here for signing on to Office 365, um, Nicole. Will the captions show on the recording? I don't have captions turned on right now, but I can, if that's what you would like. I know we did that for Katie's yesterday. That's up to, to you guys. Captions for her, or did she do it in Slack? She, Katie turned on her own captions yesterday because mm -hmm. we were having issues with sound. She was recording from home, and um, I don't know if she has CenturyLink, but it might have been something similar to what I have, and so the sound was going in and out. I always have to insert the equation editor for exponents and subscripts. Um, anything else? I would love to see a PD on Go. Yeah, we can, we'll do something separate. Like I said, um, Mr. Andrew Kovacs is going to do a little bit of sheets in relationship to forms um, tomorrow, I think it is, on the schedule. Mm -hmm. But if you want something uh, more about sheets, I can certainly do that. And we will be doing something about Office 365. Uh, students do have access to Office 365. They just have to connect. Um, they just have to go to the website just like we do. Um, there are accounts for them there, and they have to log in just like they do through Zscaler, and they also have access um, to Office 365 on a Chromebook. Oh, the mic is going in and out. Sorry about that. All right, so I'm turning on the captions. Okay. So we did footnotes. Um, how to collaborate on Google Docs, we did. Oh, providing comments. So, say Kathy's working on this section, and I want to tell her something. I can highlight, click and drag, and I can go up here. I can also use the shortcut keystrokes, but I can go up here, and I can say comment. And I can do a specific comment by doing the plus sign. It blades, and it'll auto-send. Um, please. Make sure to include an image or RFA submission or whatever you want to say. 
and then I'm going to click assign to Kathy here. That means that she's going to get an email, um, and it's also going to show over here on the side. So I've assigned it to her. She's going to open it up and she's going to do some response so we can show you what it looks like to go back and forth. But that's adding a comment. Now I can just add a comment overall. I don't want to add it to anybody in a specific. Um, but like say I'm going to go down here. I'm just going to do this. I have this section highlighted. I'm just going to add a comment. I'm not going to add a person. I need to reword this section later. I'm not so tired, or whatever. Whatever your case, that's your note for yourself. So you've made your comment. Then you've got your three dots over here. Again, I can edit that, I can delete it, I can link it, um, or I can mark it as resolved after I've fixed whatever I wanted to do over here. Um, so that's adding comments. Direct comments to specific users, I just showed. Oh, adding links and a comment. All right, so say I wanna add another one here. And I want to go out here, and there was another section on water cycle. I might want to refer to this while I'm working on my um, while I'm working on my essay. And I can copy this link, Control C. I can go back in here to my page, and I can um, Control V, paste it in there. And it's, it's now a hyperlink. So if I'm working on this later, I pull open this doc. I don't have to try to remember where I was. I just click on it. And it'll take me back to that section. I have a question for, for some of you. Uh-huh. They want you to review how to turn on and off a microphone and turn off. Oh, sure. Because it was OK. On their news. So uh, the question has been asked about how to turn on and off your um, microphone. So over here, and it's a little bit hard to see because it's right behind my thing, but you, I don't know if you can see it on your end. When I hover over the bottom, it brings up this um, banner on the bottom. And I'm going to hide this. brings up the banner on the bottom. So this is my mic. When it's red and slashed out, it's off. This is my camera. When it's red and slashed out, it's off. Um, so you can do that anytime during your video presentation. This is where the captions are, and that's what I turned on. And this shows that I'm currently presenting. It also shows it up here. Now, when you have the people pulled up, you can see whose cameras um, are on by the an image, or you can see whose microphones are um, showing. And you can see that mine is moving, so you can uh, see that my voice is coming through, hopefully better. And you can go through and see everybody. Now, like uh, Lindsay said on Monday, because you are the presenter, you can go through and mute somebody if they, uh, if you're getting feedback and they haven't muted themselves. Nothing. I hope that helps. Sorry, we're back up to the top. Let's see where we are. Questions. Oh, is there a way to insert a watermarked image behind text in Google Docs? Um, that's something that I was very used to using in Microsoft Word. I have not seen that. I uh, like to be able to put draft across the back. You know, when we would see documents that we were working on, like curriculum documents, it would say draft across the back. I haven't seen that. That doesn't mean it doesn't exist. One of you may know where it is or if there's an add-on that does that. But um, I haven't found that yet. I do know how to do it in Word, but I have not found out how to do that in Docs yet. Does anyone know how to scroll back through the captions? Um, I'm not sure that you can scroll. I'm not sure if you can scroll back um, through the captions or not, but we will see if we can find that out. So you can, if you are the presenter, you can turn off somebody else's mic. When you guys came on, we initially asked everybody to, to turn their mics off so we didn't have feedback. But because I'm the presenter and I'm the meeting, I created the meeting, um, I do have the ability to do that. But as Lindsay was saying on Monday, 
they took, uh, they made changes to the system because kids were able to do it to other kids. Like she said, this was a business. Google Meet was originally for business, and people you would hope would not do that to each other, but kids are kids, and and um, sometimes they will do things that unexpected. So they have changed that, um, so that you shouldn't be able to to mute anybody else unless you are the presenter. You turn off the mics all at once. Um, Generally, when there's more than 10, I think is what Lindsay said, people on it, it should automatically meet you when you come on. But if it doesn't, uh, you'd have to go through each person's um, and mute them, like uh, this one. Let's see. Um, you can get... You, I'm not sure if you'll get a script through the recording or not. Yesterday during Katie's session on Google Classroom was the first time we had used closed captioning. Uh, Lindsay showed it to us on Google Meet, but we didn't use it all the way through. I do know we get a transcript from the chats on the side, but I will be able to answer that question after this downloads, and I'll be able to see whether that file also attaches in my Meets folder. Okay. So, let's see. Add links to comments, access and review. Okay, so when you're working on, I think I showed this a little bit, but we'll go into more um, detail. You can click here to see all this, the changes that were made. <clears throat> you can also click here, and it'll show you all of the people who have been added, who's viewed it, who's commented, who shared, and um, your privacy. And you can also, I think it's over here. No. I think you're gonna have to do it through here. Because Kathy's not on this one. Let me find the one. Did you did you back out of the document, Kathy? Motorcycle. Uh-huh. I did. Can you go back in? I can try. Because I you, I, I lost you on motorcycles. I was in a white one and not blue. Is this the one you started working on? And you just got all fancy? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. I'm back so, in. I'm back in. Kathy's um, joining back so I can show you up here. But anyway, so for changes, all of the um, different uh, versions are going to be over here. Since this is new, this is not one that shows a variety of versions. So let me pull something else up um, that has some, maybe some edits to it. All right, so Angela Ferris and I worked on this um, previously when we were working on curriculum um, documents for fifth grade science. So you can see it shows the revision history. It shows who did what when. So like on August 2nd, both of us were working on this. Um, it always, the three dots will come up. So for more actions, you can go in there and um, name a specific version or make a copy from it. You can see when you click on it, see the changes that um, were made. I could restore this version if I wanted. It shows you how many edits were made. Um, or I could just go back out of this and go back to what the current document is. So I'm sure this hasn't happened to you, but I did have a situation where we were working collaboratively on a document and one of my um, kids, whether inadvertently or on purpose, deleted everybody's work. And after the initial panic, um, found out that this is there and and is a wonderful thing because you can restore the version so that's the revision history Let's see if there's anything else on this one. Oh, um to review comments to review comments anytime and I don't have any comments on this one let me go back over here you can now you can see Kathy's back in here to review comments, all I do is click this, and it's going to bring up the comments um, window. So this was the link. Say, I don't need that anymore. I did whatever I needed to do with this. I can click resolve. It's going to go away. Um, I can reopen it later if I decide to, but it's marked it as resolved. Uh, here's the part where I gave something to Kathy to do. And... Did you reply? 
Yeah, yeah. Not Kathy's going to reply so you can see what that looks like, um, just so you can have some idea. So you can go back and forth on that um, when you're working on the document so that everybody's on the same page and you're working towards a resolution. It is a great uh, tool. There's a great some tools in there for you to be able to do that and work. This uh, is the version of, you know, sticky notes when you're not face to face or whatever and you're working on the same thing. Revert to earlier versions. Um, I showed you how to do that. And I showed you how to make a footnote. Um, something else. Okay, so she replied. So you can see that she said yes. I can either respond back to her with something um, or whatever, or um, I can click uh, resolve and be done with it. So those are comments. Any questions about that? Uh, you might wonder what this explore feature is down here. And this is a Google feature that allows you to, whatever it is you're working on, it's going to, Google is going to look to see what you're doing in there, and it's going to try to offer some suggestions. Some people think it's cool, some people think it's creepy. <laughs> I'm just being honest. So we're working on water cycle. It's going to bring up things related to whatever the topic is, uh, and then you can search in here. So I'm going to try to find a condensation image or whatever and then you can get images again like um, Valerie was asking these are going to be copyright uh, friendly and I can just pull those in <clears throat> but again this is a document not the drawing so it's going to be left justified centered or right justified you're going to have to select it and then you can modify it however you want mm -hmm. And it gives you the citation right here. So when you're pulling it in from over here, the citation is included. And it's already saying that it's check the um, user rights and you're safe to use it. So let's see if we had any other questions. And then uh, we'll go into Google Drawings real quick. I uh, Sorry, I know it's a lot. Let's see. Um, from Curtis, has the county come up with any criteria, appropriate participation guidelines, consequences for all this online teaching while the classroom? Uh, that's a great question, Curtis, and believe me, we are all having lots and lots of meetings and discussions uh, across the state and across the country about what this means for all of us. And um, all I can tell you is that we're being very thoughtful in, in trying to um, decide what's best for kids and to use the tools that we have uh, in a way that we can provide some kind of support for them, educational support for them during this time. But yes, they are working on it and more information will come out. I think further instruction from the superintendent is supposed to happen this afternoon. That's correct, Jason. They are supposed to be having a conference call with the um, deputy superintendents this afternoon. So hopefully we'll get some more clarification. I'm just grateful that Curry Tech County has been working and we are continuing to work to try and provide what we can during this time of uncertainty, not knowing exactly what what direction the, um, the state's going to do next, but we're we're working on it. And hopefully, you're finding this time to be valuable. Um, on an image, you can click the middle of the box, grab and move it to where you want. Uh, if you don't, well, <clears throat> it does fight you a little bit on. It does fight you a little bit in a doc, but yes, it, it you can do that somewhat. If you really want the most flexibility, though, you can move them around completely in slides, and you can move them around completely in drawings. But um, images within docs, it does it does kind of get a little quirky. Uh, yes, I th I agree with you totally, Jason. I think everybody has done the best we can under the circumstances. So we're we're really trying to support each other through this. Um, from Kara, we have a lot of students who do not have internet access. Um, it is definitely something that we are concerned about, and uh, we're, believe me, I have been on the phone and the email with lots and lots of people trying to figure out what we can do. How do you make it a requirement that students make a copy before being able to see a shared, before being able to see a document shared? Um, it's called a forced copy. So, Diane, when you go over here, 
if I'm going to share, I just pulled this up randomly. If I'm going to share this, it's going to give me a link. Then I go to wherever you're going to share it. Looks like it closed my email. <clears throat> So say I'm going in here. Sorry, it's thinking about it. And I'm going to send it to Kathy or whoever my students are. So when I go in here and share it, you don't have to put it down here on the bottom. I just like it because it's a little bit cleaner. I can change this to uh, just a, a name. And then I go to the end of the file name. You see where I have sharing, equal sharing edit. You can backspace to that last forward slash, and I can change it to copy. Once I do that, when she gets this and she clicks it, it's going to come up to the screen, and it's going to make her click this button if she wants it, and that's going to force a copy. That leaves my original intact, and it gets her a copy of it. Those are called forced copies. <laughs> yeah. The smarting does definitely get in the way. Um, as far as uh, Wi-Fi being available in parking lots, depends on the school building you're in. Some of that's already the case. Uh, although Ryan, and I'm sure he's listening, says absolutely does not work in a uh, Strawberry parking lot. But in several of the other school parking lots, you can, depending on where you are in location to the the wireless access points, some, sometimes you can um, still get access there, but they are looking at lots of ways to try and provide accessibility for um, students while still being mindful that being in the car with a bunch of kids might not be ideal either. Um, <clears throat> anyway, and power sources and battery life, and there are lots of other things to consider, but we are definitely talking, talking about lots of ways to try and, and meet needs. Um, sure. And Diane, you can also change the end. Instead of saying copy, you can say view or you can say edit um, up to that last forward slash. Yeah, I know, Kathy. I mean, I, Kathy's telling me, Shelly, that I can hide it, but I was just messing with it. But sometimes when you hide it, then it's a pain in the neck to try and get it back. So, <clears throat> but anyway, so I think I've covered. So let me go down. I think I've covered um, most of those questions. We'll go into uh, drawings really quickly, and then Kathy can do her thing, and I'll try to, I'm going to speed talk through drawings. Sorry. Oh, all right. We're going to take, uh, we're going to take a two-minute uh, TV timeout. Kathy needs to tell me something. We'll come back to Google um, drawings <laughs> in two minutes.
Okay, we're back. So real quickly so that um, Kathy has time for her copyright because that is certainly important. So when you go over here to your drive and you go into new, you go down to more, you see all of these other options. You may never have used this. You may love using it already, but Google Drawings is basically a digital poster board. Um, the gray uh, like checkerboard pattern in the back will not show through whatever it is you're doing. Um, I forget what they call it, but it's like a watermark, except it doesn't actually show even when you print. It's just to show you the differentiation between the actual uh, working space and the white space over on the side. So when you come in here to Google Drawing, it is just going to be this one screen. So it's not like a smart board um, notebook that you can extend or even on a Promethean board, which is called an infinite canvas. You can't go, keep going on and on and on farther and farther. Unless you change the size, and even I have played with that enough to where I was about to pull my hair out on something. So it's not the, e I'm just going to tell you, my experience has not been the easiest in trying to make it larger. Um, it also does not allow you to add another page, but there are some great things that you can do in Google Drawings, especially when you're talking about trying to annotate um, with Google Classroom. And I'm just going to show you these menu uh, features first. You can share from here, just like anything else. New, open, make a copy, download it as a PDF. Here you can download it as a JPEG, a PNG file, or uh, scalable vector graphics. And there are some situations where you need that specific file type, but you would know that in advance. Again, you can make it available offline. Um, we don't have any version histories yet, so there's nothing here. Um, to, that's why those are grayed out. <clears throat> but if you did want to try and change the settings, you can come here and change them from standard widescreen. Um, you can go to custom, say you wanted it to be eight and a half by 11, um, like a regular sheet of paper and it will change that for you. So when you go in here, you can insert an image. We're just going to use the one from some web. Let's see. Um, something not science related. Kathy, what can I pull up here? Oh, um, buses. Oh, you want something that will really come up? Mm -hmm. Buses. Buses always comes up. So it gets the care of it. All right, so say we we're going to do something about buses. I could pull this over, and now I'm going to have um, this in. And in the last session where we were talking about where you can move it anywhere on the, the canvas or the poster board, whatever you want to call it, you get this. It looks like the internal section of a coordinate plane. Um, that allows you to move it anywhere. The lovely thing about these red lines, it'll tell me if I am dead center, for those who are OCD, if I am dead center of that piece of paper right there. If I go down here, it's going to show me if I am dead center horizontally or vertically. And if I get it both ways, then I know I am center of the whole uh, the whole ball of wax right there, complete center. Uh, again, if you're going to scale the drawing, you want to do it from one of the ends. Uh, if you're going to smush it, you're going to do it from one of the sides. And this up here at the top, kids love this mess. You can click on this and you can turn the bus upside down and they think that is hysterical and then you can make it bigger or whatever so there's lots of things that you can do with images in here um, you can also insert a text box that's going to make your little plus sign you're going to go in here you're going to click and drag and i'm going to insert a text box um we appreciate our bus drivers or whatever you want to say um, once you do that, you can highlight, you can change the font. Uh, Kathy can talk about a more variety of fonts, but you can do lots of things on there. You can change the, um, the color of the text. You can change, you can highlight it. You can um, do all sorts of things uh, from all of these options. Same as you can in Word. You can also insert a link, say I want to um, insert a link about how great our bus drivers are. I don't see the explore feature over here. Um, but say I wanted to go back to NC Wise Owl, because we're definitely going to encourage the use of the tools that we have. 
the NCYs out. You're not always going to be asked for um, a uh, password. Depends on where you are in the site. I don't know if we'll get anything for bus drivers or not. Let's see. Um, so say we were doing something on uh, Don't Let the Pigeon Drive the Bus. Great book. So we go in here. We're going to copy this link. We're going to go back in um, our drawing. And I can put the link right here. Oops, where'd it go? I put the link right here, and I'm going to put the text, um, whatever it is. And then you see that the text is there, and it's attached to the link, and it will take me back to uh, that place on the internet. There it is. So those are inserting a shape. Um, we can go in here and we can make flow charts. We can do all sorts of things. It's going to give you the plus sign. Wherever you start, you're going to click and drag. You're going to make that shape. It's going to automatically fill it with light blue for whatever reason. But I can go in here and I can change the color of the inside. I can go in here and I can change the color of um, that. The I thought that was a border, maybe not. I can change the size of the border around it. Um, I can change, can I make it dashed? I can make it dashed. I can make, make it 12. Oh, so Kathy wants me to make it enormous there. Um, so you can make all these changes in here. And then you see I have the plus sign again. I can decide I want it somewhere else. And it will show me whether it's centered it's centered of the image, it's centered of the page. So that's where those red marks that come up, just so you can kind of get it where you want it. Um, again, you can resize it from here. I can turn it from there, um, or I can delete it, whatever you want to do. Oh, also, one of the cool things about this is once you get it the way you want it, you need several of them. You're just going to copy it while it's selected and paste and paste and paste and I can put arrows all over the place and I can move them all separately I can resize them uh, I can do all sorts of things um, within this it's just an open canvas uh, and there are lots of other shapes to choose from you can see every time you come over to the side it gives you another set of menus oh and Virginia sorry I just remembered about your subscript I'll get back to you about that in the Google Docs um, but the equations you have some equation symbols in here you can also use um, you can insert a table in here as well um, if you want it, a diagram, a chart. Word art is a little bit different. It is uh, very similar to what Word art was in uh, Word documents. So whatever you type in here, it's going to it's going to make some auto formats to it. But you can go up here and change the fill color. Say I want it to be yellow. Um, Notice that the format changes when, I mean, the, the top, these tools change depending on where you are. Um, and I can go back in here and say, um, or whatever, and it'll change it from there. But I can do lots of things with this. And I can layer them, and I can put things on top of each other, and then I can arrange the order of them. I can say, I want this sent to the back. Wait, let me see if I can bring this. Arrange. I want this. Well, let me bring it up front. Wow. Well, bring to the front so then I can bring the picture on top of everything else. Um, so there's a lot of little uh, quirky things in here. I use this, um, I use it most when I was making uh, posters for my chess uh, lessons. And with my AIG kids, because I could not find what I wanted online, I wasn't happy with it. So I made posters about each of the chess pieces and how they moved and things like that so that we could post them in the classroom. But you can use this for lots of different things. Kathy's helped me out by pulling this up because we were talking about Google Classroom yesterday. So if you wanted to um, annotate something in Google Classroom and not use Kami, you could pull a PDF in here at, uh, She's going to explain when she comes up how she did it, but it won't pull a PDF in here directly. You're going to have to kind of have a workaround. So you're either 
you're taking a picture of it or you're trying to convert it to some kind of um, image file when you pull it in, but then you have it in here and it shows it just as um, you, we did in the last screen. So I can insert text boxes here and I can say um, whatever I want to put in here, character map. So who's Harry Potter or whatever. So I can put that in here and I can move it around and annotate. That's my version of an annotate um, directly on here. And then that could be uploaded into your classroom. So this is kind of the workaround if you didn't want to work with something extra like Cami or something that was, as Katie said um, yesterday, she's tried several other things to annotate too and she called them clunky and, and that, that didn't work well for her. Um, and Cami is only free for a certain period of time. So this is a possible workaround if you are in love with your uh, specific uh, organizer or worksheet or whatever it is you're doing, they can still come in here and they can also do things like you can insert um, a text box over here on the side and then they can insert um, a shape and do an arrow and they can do it from here to here and over here in the text box this is where they write their answer or whatever. So there's some a, a lot of things that you can do in here. Um, so I know we're running out of time, but that that is the the very bare bones version of drawings. Um, if you want more on that, again, we'll we'll put something out at the end of the week to see what you would like for the following week's um, webinars or um, YouTube videos. But Kathy's going to come up and share right now on her uh, copyright. Hello, everybody. Let's get rid of that. Let's go here. I think we're going to close some of these windows. <laughs> just a, it's a bad habit. Sorry. Just a bit. We're just going to just going to get rid of all. Of Hey Molly. No, that wasn't the end. Sorry, Kathy got uh, click happy on um, on getting rid of my tabs. Sorry about that. Molly's at her mama's. Are you your mama's? Okay, so let's go to your here and go to um, your recent and. Right down quick. There it is. Publishers and new audio. It was um. Is that one from yesterday? I should probably call it something like. What's the name of it? Copyright. Um, copyright. On steroids. Here we go. Here we go. Now we're ready. Sorry. And we do live in some strange times. Okay, so um, before we get really, uh, we're not going to get super, super deep into read into uh, copyright. If you have copyright questions, you can certainly ask your media specialist. Um, but I do want to talk a little bit about read alouds because that's been a concern of teachers for the past two weeks, particularly um, K-2 teachers. And... The School Library Journal has published a list of all of the publishers who are allowing read-alouds, and each publisher has different guidelines. And this is just three of them, so that you can see what I'm talking about. So Abrams says that you're welcome to do this, but you have to send a permission statement to Abrams at the beginning of the video before you tape. 
you have to tell them your name, your title of the book, the author, and the illustrator. You can only put it on a school platform, which means you cannot put it on YouTube. You can keep it no later than June 30th and delete it. Most of them are saying June 30th and you have to delete it. You cannot archive it. You cannot keep your se special copy for next year. Um, then at the end of your video, you have to send Abrams a link that shows them your video and gives them all this information about where you live and your school and blah, blah, blah. Okay. Houghton Mifflin says that you do not have to send them a permission form. You may put it on any platform you want, or maybe it's Houghton Mifflin. Anyway, HMH. You can put it on Facebook. You can put it on Zoom. You can put it on YouTube. You can put it on Google Classroom. They're good with that. You do have to get rid of it by June 30th. They would like you to email them to let them know which titles and authors and illustrators you're using. Candlewick, and I know some of our um, schools do have Candlewick um, books. At the beginning of the recording, you have to tell them that you have permission. It's not a bad idea to do that on it, all of them because that's not a terrible thing to have to do. You may only put it on your school platform at this time. They have not said you need to get rid of it, but I would say June 30th would just be a good ballpark figure on that. Then you have to email them your name, your city, your state, the name of the private secure platform you're going to use, the author, the illustrator, the book you intend to read, and uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Scholastic, um, and we have tons of Scholastic stuff since we have Scholastic book fairs. You have to try to put it on your school platform, but if you can't, you can put it on YouTube. I have a handout for this session with all of these notes uh, with links to School Library Journal and um, most of the publishers. And we'll attach it, and we'll attach it but definitely, um, I know that there has been a like, oh, publishers are doing that or are, are allowing this. Yes, but each publishing house is, um, is publishing guidelines. Now, I know that K2 teachers can go out there on YouTube and find all kinds of folks reading books. Some of them are good and some of them are bad. And more than likely, more than likely, nobody is going to take you to task for this. But you cannot go on that assumption because there's always somebody that wants to test it. And I, I just would go by the guidelines. So if, if it's not a book that you are just wedded to, and you just just find a different book if you can't follow the publisher's guidelines. Just find you a different book. Seriously, it's not worth it's not worth having Sandy get a call from somebody because she did a couple. Um, she, she got an email two Christmases ago about a teacher paid pay, teacher paid teacher link that what the teacher was no longer even in our employee. The website was not available. Nobody could see it, but spiders could crawl for it and they wanted it down. And she ended up having to call the company on Christmas Eve, our, our web page company, and they had to go in and find it and delete it. So um, you cannot stress her out any more than she is already stressed. You're welcome. Okay. So you need to read your websites and guidelines carefully. And this is a good example. Audible has opened up all of their um, kid books or a list of kid books that are free for streaming. But on the website, it does not say that you can stream it. It says that you can give it to your kids, you can give it to your parents, and they can stream it at home. But it does not say that you can stream it through Dojo or that you can stream it through Google Classroom or you can stream it through YouTube. So read your guide guidelines carefully. Because we are in a very strange time, if you use images in any of your presentations, and I'm not suggesting that you don't, you need to cite it if the person wants you to cite it. That's only fair. So, I'm, um, Sandy showed you this morning how to use your Google Explorer. I'm going to show you again. I'm going to show you what happens if you can't use Google Explore, and I'm going to caution you to cite it when necessary. It is always good to err on the side of caution 
So if it doesn't say cited and you're a little bit hesitant, just cite it. It's not going to kill anybody to cite something. Next, I'm going to show you about the explore feature and I'm going to give you an example of when it did not work. And um, so Christy came to me last week and she asked me for a way to do a hundreds chart. And all of you who are in K-5 know what a hundreds chart is. And any of you of the parents also know what a hundreds chart is. So she asked me for a hundreds chart because she had one, but it looked like it had been a pay. Somebody had created it and somebody else had paid for it. And when you buy something, it does not give you the rights to stick it out on, there on the internet. It does give you the right to use it in your classroom, and they are doing a little more on um, uh, being a little wiggle room on that. But I can tell you that people that make a living out of making products cannot afford to lose their job right now. So what we did was we went to Google Images. So I'm going to go over here to the Explore chart because it will automatically give it to me here. And I'm going to put that I need a hundreds chart. And I'll show you what happened. So I said, well, let's just go look for a hundreds chart. And I went to Images. And this is what came up. Because these are the copyright friendly and we can't see the screen, sorry. Oh. Better? Yes. Better? Yes. Let me run back quickly through this. You couldn't see. Sorry about that. Sorry. This is a recovery. Okay. I've got a link to this, um, to the website from School Library Journal that gives you a list of all the publishers and their guidelines. Read websites carefully. If it says you can give it to your kids, give it to your kids, but that does not say you can stream it. So just read them carefully. You're going to use Google Images through Explore or another way. I'm going to show you the second way. But be very careful because people do not want you using their images. And in these crazy times, if people are relying on their ability to sell things through the internet, they're not going to be particularly, um, some may not be charitable. I can think of a couple of examples that we have in the district that, ha that people aren't, uh, everybody's not opening up everything. That's just a, a great way to say that. Okay, so here's my hundreds chart. And if you look, there's not a K-5 teacher in this little group right here that sees a hundreds chart that they would use. So, and, and I typed in hundreds chart. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to show you. We're going to go to Google. Go to the Google. We're go to Google Images. And this is always the way to do this. So I'm going to type in my hundreds chart. And I'll probably get a ton of teacher pay teacher stuff and 3,000 Pinterest things. Okay, I see lots of hundreds charts. I bet you do too. Can you see it? Yes. Bless you. Okay, so I see lots of hundreds charts. But when I go over here to tools, and I go over here to usage rights, and I go down to label for non-commercial use with remodification, and the reason I always say modification is so if I have to draw an error or put my name on it, or draw a box on something, that's called modification. And all of a sudden, I get the same images that I got in Explore. So we ended up making one, and it worked just fine. But if you can't find one here, 
choice of R? Yes. <clears throat> this is the size. Oh, oh, sorry, yes. Okay, so this is not filtered by any license. And you, most of your sites, most of your photo sites start out with not filtered by any license. So they have all the Pinterest images and all the teacher pay teacher images and any other images that come up. Now, Curry Tuck um, has a filter with Zscaler, but they also have on a Google admin, they have some filters built in so you don't see any things that you shouldn't see. That, not, that is not 100%. But it is not 100%. So you just don't send your kids out to search for images. It's just not a good idea. Secondly, so let's go back over here to my tools again and go to my usage rights. Label for use with, with modification. That means it can be reused, but that does not give you copyright friendly. That does not say that somebody is, you can just reuse it. I, I don't go with that one. Label for reuse. I'm not safe with that one. Label for non-commercial reuse for modification means that the owner of the image has said, as long as you're not using it commercially, you can write on it, type on it, put anything on it. So I always choose this one. And when I'm working with students, I tell them the same thing. It's always the second one from the bottom. Label for reuse with modification. And that is why it says usage rights labeled for reuse with modification. And you need to cite it when necessary. So any of these could be used. Now it does, I agreed, it can make your choices really slim. And, but you are putting, you may put your things in a walled garden, such as Google Classroom. You may just put them on a piece of paper and, and get your parents to drive to the end of your driveway and pick them up. But any of you who are going to put them out there on a web page or through a video that you're saying go to so-and-so, I would be very careful because the world is watching. And there are some nefarious people out there who want to, who want to, who don't want to be as charitable as the rest of the world. Am I right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go over here to meet and I'm going to see what questions y'all got. Yes, yes, yes. Good, good, good. Anybody got a question? I thought it was. Yeah. Yeah, because it's 1027. Okay. All right. So Kathy and I will be back online this afternoon um, during office hours um, to see if there are any other questions you have. Again, we... Uh, I know the drawings was very short and the copyright was very short. Jill is working on um, some more advanced copyright information for us. And we have lots of other people who are working on different um, PD for us at this time. So we're, uh, we're hoping to get you some more information. We're constantly working on it. Will you be able to get a copy of the handout and the yes. notes? Yes, we'll attach that to the, um, the calendar invite. So you'll have the files there, but we'll also send them out when we send the uh, video. Um, so many sites offering free read aloud in books. There was a document that she also had, and she didn't show that one. Let me pull it up. No, there was another one. Um, there was another one that she had that had um, the read alouds. It's the one called Copyright March 2020. Here's the other one. This is the handout that she was referring to. All of these are hyperlinks. Um, you can go to the usage rights on them. The one down here, the big list of children's authors doing online read-alouds and activities, those are, uh, that's from We Are Teachers. I don't know if any of you 
follow them. Um, they usually come up with some good things, but that is a, a place that you can go to and they're not, I, I didn't recognize every author um, that was listed there, but these are authors that are um, doing read alouds for elementary school kids. And then you get into sections for middle school and you get into some, like you can get Oprah Winfrey reading a hula hoop and queen. And these are all uh, copyright okay um, to use with your kids. So um, we included that link on there as well. And we'll keep adding um, to this, but we'll share those pages with you and her PowerPoint. These are some sites that she had already uh, put together for free and copyright friendly um, places to get images. But not all those are open to kids. Not all those are open to kids. So again, be careful. Let's see if there are any other questions. Would you please paste the link to the school library journal? Um, we will do that. Are links to YouTube okay? It depends. Just like Kathy said, there are lots of people online right now reading some books, and I love a good read aloud. But just because they've read it aloud and they've put it on their personal YouTube account or uh, or their um, school YouTube account doesn't mean that they are okay with co that they have followed the directions. And you just want to be very careful because when you repost it, you're you then put yourself in that position to be part of um, of that as well. So. I really hope that you guys got something out of this. There's uh, definitely a lot um, that we crammed in a short period of time. Tiffany, what's the comfort level of uploading pics of purchased sheet music that will only be displayed in my Google Classroom and not for public view? Buddy, does Buddy can Buddy answer that? Kathy's saying she he does, she doesn't know if maybe Buddy has some more information on that from his um, experience than she does from the library, but Buddy may able, be able to give us some more guidance on that. I think it depends on when you purchased it, what the agreement was, when you purchased it, and who you are allowed to uh, share it with. If you have rights to share it with your class and your group of students, and it's within your Google Classroom, and they're and they don't have the ability to take it elsewhere, then I think you're okay, but you need to look at what what the rights were when you purchased the um, original documents. So I, I so hope that you guys got a lot out of this. Yes, um, yes, we can link to a news article and give students a separate Google Docs with questions and yes. answers about it. Yes, you can do that. Again, if you want more on Google Drawings or you want more on copyright, Jill's working on that, but we can do some additional uh, we can do some additional sessions. We'll be sending out a form just to get some more feedback on what you would like us to do moving forward. And we're we're sorry we're five minutes over. We appreciate your patience and your participation, and we appreciate you um, giving us some grace when we had some technical difficulty. And I'm sorry about the the mics, but you guys have a great afternoon. I'll send out a link for the um, uh, the office hours. See you guys later.